So, um, especially between now and 6.30. Yeah. <laughs> especially between now and 6.30. Especially. Um, so the first item, it uh, relates uh, yeah. to the appointments to the Planning and Zoning Commission. We are set up for interviews on 5th uh, in, in the uh, evening. Question is, do you want to interview all of these folks or not? I do think <coughs> that we've got to note that John Doherty was no longer interested. Is that correct? That's correct. He has withdrawn his application. So now there are eight applicants for five openings. So we have eight applicants for five positions. Do you want to interview, interview them, Bob? I, I would suggest that we interview only the new candidates, um, the ones that are not currently on. Is, is that what you're referring to, or are you thinking all of them? Uh, that's the open question. I, I think we all know our current planning commissioner. I feel like I do pretty well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Okay, why don't we schedule then interviews only with the new candidates, but make sure that we advise the incumbents that they shouldn't read anything into that. It's just that council feels like they know who they are and there's no need to have another interview. Okay, Brad? So that means we have five applicants for three, no. We have how many how many new applicants do we have? We have, let's see, now that we have eight, we have five new applicants and the three incumbents who applied. So we have eight applications. There are five openings. Um, the, the, uh, for the three incumbents, their terms are up. Yeah. And then we have two vacancies that you will fill the unexpired terms. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, what, oh, right. just another follow-up, I guess, on the questions to be asked of the interviewees, you know, kind of developing a set of questions. <coughs> I don't know if that's the city attorney's. In the past, the city attorney has done that. Are you willing? Oh, sure. I think actually we have a, a Karen, I, I, we may have even already provided you with a list of uh, kind of questions for this. I know we have, uh, uh, a, 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 we did the last time around. I'm not so sure there's much of a, going be much of a difference. Uh, well, I'll talk to, to, uh, uh, our planning attorney who had uh, kind of helped me do this last time around. Yeah, and I'd like to see if we can come up with some different questions. Can you watch them on the <coughs> Ooh, yeah. good idea. We would be like a, a, so it would be like a, a cheating on the test. Yeah. Yes. We don't want yeah. to do that. Okay, let's do that. We can do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to clarify. January 5th is the interview day? Yes. And the time... Time is what time, Karen? I believe you said it's either at 5 or 5.30, and I will verify. Okay. Will you send out an email to everybody just as a reminder? I certainly will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Council appointments to intergovernmental agencies. We have information in the backup. There are... Um, more than half a dozen or so appointments that we need to make. There are another couple of dozen that are reviewed. And so why don't we just go through and see if those, particularly on the ones where the appointments need to be made, if the current representative wants to continue to do that and if we're fine with that. So does that work? All right, first one is Accelerate Colorado. Barb, you are there. Do you want to continue? I'd like to. Any yeah. objection to Barb? Continue. No. Can I ask a question, too? It, this Aurora home it has my name, uh, but I think it's Molly. Yes. She's been one doing it. Just been doing it. So yeah, I just recently. wanted to make sure. That, unless if she doesn't, well, I'll ask her. Do you want to continue on Aurora at home? Sure. Absolutely. If we're talking about Aurora, no. Okay. We're talking about appointments. We're not talking <laughs> about the organization. Okay. Are we talking about? Okay. Um, I am currently on Aurora Home Operation, and I think we just wanted to make sure that that was actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. Yeah. That's a committee. 
that's not even technically something we review. So. Right. Last time I talked with you, you wanted to make sure that people knew that I'm on the operations. I want to make that note. I can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, Hard operations hearing. committee of the operational. It's a subcommittee. Are you on it? Yes. Sir. And are you still on work? No, and I'm not working off the board okay. list. So I'm working off of okay. the, the commentary sheet that listed the appointments, page 26 and 27. Adams County Economic Development. Rini is currently the representative. I'm the alternate. Anybody else interested? Everybody fine? Okay. Um, Rappahoe County Community Corrections Board. We need to replace um, Scott Newhouse. Suggestions? Or is that one that we should defer and look for suggestions? I would suggest Terry or Skip or somebody make that suggestion. Why don't you give us a recommendation? We take you um, Aurora Economic Development Council terms for Marsha and Skip Noe expire this month, so we need to take make, make two appointments. And I believe mine expires because I was chair of PDR. And I believe that was why I was chair of PDR is always on the ADC, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, but that's not why you <coughs> actually when you <laughs> Oh no. Actually when you Six. actually when you chair P E D N R you were able to serve two seats on the board so that you didn't mess with your term. You were currently a board member and then you got to be an ex officio member from being chair of EDNR. So you were technically serving two hats. Okay. And when you were um, when you stopped serving as chair, then you just went back to your regular board position and it didn't interrupt your term. Okay. But now my term's up. No, your term's yeah, now your term's up. Okay. okay. All right. Yes, so I first question is do you two wish to continue? Yes. Second question is, is somebody else interested? <coughs> Molly. I am very much so, thank you. Or which? ADC. <coughs> well, there, there are two seats. The are one you that trying to replace somebody, or are you just trying to? Oh, no, I would like the seat that expires in a year. 15. Well, we're not doing 15, we're doing 14. The two that expire in 14 are Marsha and Skip. And they're not renewing their terms. They are yeah, both they interested are. in oh, they renewing are. Okay. it. All right, then. So am I. Okay, I, I can help. Mom, yes, I'm going to be stepping off of the ADC board, so there's going to be an opening. When are you going to do that? Uh, effective yesterday. <laughs> okay. I've not, have not heard back. I sent an email, but it was Sunday. So yeah, okay. 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 Then, if Marcia and Skip are both interested, we could reappoint both of them, and. Um, if Bob's getting off, we've got another vacancy. Is there anyone other than Molly who is interested? All right. Any problems with Molly filling Bob's vacancy? Congratulations. Thank you both. Thank you for your service, Bob. All right. Um, Mile High Behavioral Health Care Cominus Crisis Center, Bob Laguerre. One year term limit, January through December. Do you want to? Continue, Bob. That's like a year-to-year -year term limit, right? Because I've been here two and a half or three years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but we should be. Unless should someone be. wants to, to fight me for it, I'll stay on it. Anybody want to fight Bob to be appointed for another year? Can I make a comment? Sure. I think it would be great because um, in talking to, just so you know, in talking to um, Bob Dorsheimer, he has commended you. Um, for the work that you're doing. So I, I think that's... Thank and if, you. if I could also, I, everything I hear is that you're just yeah. an amazing behind-the-scenes um, yeah. miracle worker. So, yeah, we'll stay on your I even appreciate it, see, Bob. Thank you. <laughs>
you find that, out how the other half lives. That's pretty high on it. <laughs> I don't want to be much. <laughs> All right. FRA. Uh, Sally Monier's term expires this month. Um, I have not heard anything that would indicate she does not want to continue serving. In fact, I think she's just got herself elected secretary of the board. So, but is there anyone else interested? Okay. We well, can nervous, will, but I would Thanks. Sally will continue. Uh, Spirit of Aurora. Debbie's term expires. Or expired. We need to... I nominate Debbie. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> well, I think we're in the middle of, of the transition. Yeah. But I think that's fine. Anybody else interested? No objections. Debbie, you're reappointed. Um, we are to review a couple of dozen appointments, uh, even though um, other entities may make the appointments and we do not, we're still supposed to review them. Isn't that five dollars? Five. Not anymore. Adams County Aging Network. Renee Keener. Any objections to continuing? No. Do we Adam's have at least an attendance record or some kind of indication that the person is contributing on Aurora's behalf? If I mean, you want that, we can get that. I just think that we should at least have some acknowledgement of their participation in a credible manner. Can we get the... Uh, the uh, <coughs> Attendance record from the group. Yeah, I, I don't want to question their involvement. I just want to make sure they're going and that we know that they're active. Well, but we don't have it, so we have to request it. I'm just so. asking. Adams County Airport uh, Coordinating Committee. I think, Stephen, I should step off this and let somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really scared the heck out of them. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this. Uh, yeah. This. Um, This is almost um, a superfluous committee now because this committee was in place before the county took over um, the operations of the airport. And the county is still now in charge of the operations of the airport. This committee goes back to when um, there was an airport, <coughs> a separate airport authority. So should we find out whether or not this is still needed? So this is for Front Range Airport. Right. So, yeah, okay, so we should, if we're gonna continue that, we should say that instead of Adams County Airport. But anyway, if, it, if you think Let's it's- Let's find out. Yeah. Let's find out. We what is the one that, that, because there's two committees that, that deal with in Adams County, um, because there's the ACC and then there's 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 a advisor there's a front range airport advisory committee, but that's appointed by the county commission. Right, but the Adams County Coordinating Committee that has been that isn't that the one that's three from Denver, and three from Adams County. Oh, this is oh oh, this oh okay. Is, this, this is, is the, the other thing. This is the Den this is Den the Denver committee. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so never mind. Yeah, this is the three from Denver. Right. And right. Right three from Adams County and basically it's Steve, a county commissioner, yeah. and somebody from Commerce City. Right. So I'm I'm not really part of that committee. No, this is the bigger committee and you are part of it. I'm part of the bigger committee. That's what I'm not this is. Part of, okay. Yeah. Sorry, this is the committee that, that's been meeting regularly with Denver for the last two years and our brains are so fried that we can't remember. And that's why I think we should sit down and let you <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we ought to continue, I suppose. Uh, I Any objection to that? All right. Um, Royal Mental Health, Barbara Shannon Bannister. I will tell you she attends very well. And Marcia can tell you that, too, because she's on my she's board. She is there. Alone. Any objection to Barbara continuing? Uh, the Royal Public Schools Citizens Bond Oversight Committee, Brad Pierce, right now. 
this, I was on a committee of APS when John Barry was superintendent, but it wasn't the bond oversight committee. It was just a budget committee. So this bond oversight committee Laguerre was on, and um, I followed him on that also. And I um, highly recommended somebody else take over, and none of us did. So you got appointed. What did you, did you, you miss were here, perhaps? Yeah, I missed the meeting. Put so. <laughs> <laughs> me on there, I guess. So. If they, if they still meet, I mean, it was... Uh, it was only quarterly. Yeah. And... Yeah. I don't think they, I, I think I, they I, have a committee next. Let's, okay. let's make sure there's still a committee. I if there is, Brad will do yeah, it. Yeah. I, I thought they disbanded it. I mean, the bonds are all yeah. done. The money's yeah. all yeah. spent. Yeah. Right. Let's just there's make sure... If there is, Brad will If there is a committee, Brad's doing it. it. If there isn't, take it off the list. Um... Cherry Cape Basin Water Quality Authority. Brad, you yep. want to continue? I'll stay there. Everybody okay with that? Uh, Dr. Cog, Bob Roth, Reedy Peterson. Okay? Okay. You're reappointed. Um, E470, Steve Ogan, Bob Broom. Um, I'm sure Bob would want to continue as an alternate, but... Bob's term limited, and we ought to have somebody ready to step in before his term goes out because there are some bigger things that are going to be happening. So, could we? If he doesn't want to do it, I'd like to do it. Right, let's that's let's see. Um, put a hold on this, see what Bob thinks. Yeah. If he wants to continue, fine, or maybe for part of the year. Uh, Barb has an interest in being the alternate. Any anybody else interested? If Bob is not, how often do they meet? Hmm? How often do they meet? Uh, twice, a twice a month. What do you drop out? I'm interested. Okay. If Bob says no, I might be interested in the alternate. Okay. Then we'll have to bring that one back. Let's check with Bob. We've got two council members who are interested. If he's not, so we'll bring that one back. Um, Highline Working Group, Bob Laguerre, Pat Schuler. Are we okay? I just have a question. Tom Ross, Mike Ross, sir, formed that new group. Does that need to have a place for an elected? Okay, so we don't need to be there. That's a foundation. Okay, so thank you. We don't have any money, so they don't. Okay. All right, Lowry Redevelopment Authority Board of Directors. Um, They're kind of winding down, aren't they? They are, but it's yeah. my understanding they still meet. I I had appointed Richard Maestas and Don Lindemann. I get to appoint <coughs> two members. I appointed them. Uh, we set up Bob Watkins to be an ex officio to <coughs> show up. Yeah. Anyone, anybody okay, comfortable with those? All right. Um, the Lowry Community Advisory Committee, um, same thing, I'm, we get seven. I'm on it. I hardly ever go because Brad goes, well, and, but we keep on well, we, meetings. And right. then, this is this is the board where the Aurora Mayor appoints seven people and the Denver Mayor appoints 14, so, but yeah, we haven't had many meetings lately. So. Well, I'll fail. Okay. You're a happy staying on? Yep. Yep. Okay. And then the um, also the uh, Lowry Coordinating Committee, Marsha, Molly, Sally, who, whom I have appointed. You all want to continue? They never meet. Okay. <laughs> that's great. That's what that's needed. Yeah, that's the best thing we met twice in five years. I think that's like one more year or four. Maybe it would be a good idea if the next time there's a meeting, the, the question is asked as to whether or not the group needs to continue so we can get an answer. Um, the uh, Metro North Chamber of Commerce Development Council. Um, Debbie, you're on that. I'm on it, and 
Now that I have a different job, I think I can get there more more frequently. I'm not there as often. So you want to continue? Yes. Yeah. All right. Everybody comfortable with that? It's a long drive. <laughs> um, noise, Brad and yep. Amy. Yep. You both want to be there? Yeah, you know, since I'm president, I guess I have to. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can always advocate. Yeah. You know, Bart was on AME. Yeah, that's right. Because you know. what are you, secretary? Or? And then finally, um, I-70 Regional Economic Investment Partnership. Brad is there. Yep. In fact, the board, the board uh, re-elected me back on for 2015 anyway. So. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to check on um, the Arapahoe County Community Corrections Board, and we're going to check on um, E-470 alternate. Is there anything else that we were going to check on? The uh, bond oversight. Yeah, the APS bond oversight. Oh yeah, the oversight committee. So if we could check on those and then bring them back first meeting in uh, January. Okay, that covers the appointments to intergovernmental agencies. One, one <coughs> comment or Go ahead, Brad. on the spreadsheet, the um, contact person for I-70 REAP is different now. It's not Lois Buckman anymore. I'll have to send you the new contact info for the new person. Okay. Also on the Bob. spreadsheet, I'm sure that this will fall together anyway, but it has on urban drainage, it both has both myself and Debbie's names. And I'm sure my name will fall off next month, but I just wanted to. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, issue update. Um, just one thing that I have real quick. Um, if you all remember, uh, Dava um, won a national award from the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. Here is a booklet that uh, came out, and there are yellow piece things on each page in case you want to take a look at it. Anything else for issue update? We should clap for Well, most of those we don't make the appointment. The organization makes the appointment. Okay. I, I have a question on something else, though. Okay. Could I continue? Okay. Um, on um, AdCom, is since we're having a new um, a new year starting. Is there any way we can request them to have their meetings on a different evening? The fourth Wednesday at 6.30? There are three of us here that can't make those because we're on another board meeting. We can request. I wouldn't be optimistic. Well, that's, uh, I'm not, but, uh, but since we can it's a new request. year. Okay. Yes. Right. And then I had something else. Um, NLC subcommittees. I'm, my, I'm not on there. And I should be on there for um, transportation yes. and infrastructure. That's correct. And okay. And visit Aurora. They don't have any openings. Is that correct? Um, I don't know if they have openings, but again, they make the appointment. Yeah. We don't make the appointment. Visit Aurora. And I was asking about the racks. I didn't think you were on the rack. I thought that was given to somebody else. Um, it is. It's been. It, Bob Room got, yeah. yeah. got the appointment. Yeah. Yep. So I should be off there. Okay. Thank you, uh, Molly. Thank you. I was asked on behalf of Quality of Life from our meeting last month to let you know there are three or four vacancies on the Human Relations Commission. If people have people that they would like to recommend apply they should apply and go through the process but there are several vacancies on that one and we also saw the preliminary plans for remember back in the olden days in the budget we put some money in for a neighborhood cleanup program and we looked at the plans for how that would roll out 
Um, it'll be more detailed when you see the quality of life minutes. But I, excuse me, going to pass around the backup from the committee if you want to take a quick glance now. The idea is that each of the six wards would have $10,000. There would be an application process. Um, neighbors could band together and do work to improve their neighborhood. So, um, sorry at large guys, it doesn't quite seem fair. You should have your own pot as well. But um, I'm going to go ahead and pass this around for anybody that wants to know how that turned out. Um, I'm sure we'll have opportunity to come back to the agenda to act on. It's actually coming to study session January. Yeah. Yeah. January. All right, we take a quick look at it now, and then you'll see it in January. You'll know what it's about. Can I make one comment? Barb? On the urban drainage, it doesn't change in December. I believe it changes in January. You, you go right. in the December meeting and then. We already have there. And Debbie takes over in January. Yeah. Well, here it says it changes in December, so it does change in, in January. I went to January. I started in December. Yeah, but we, we kind of changed the rules so that everybody gets involved. Bob will let you get settled, but you are the focus of a question. So, have a seat. No. <laughs> <laughs> you did that well. Um, we just went through the reappointments, the appointments and reappointments, and the question was regarding E470, uh, whether you wanted to continue as the alternate and do that all year or part of the year, or if you wanted to get on. I'll stay on. You want to stay on? All right. Then that answers that one. I'll stay on as the alternate. <coughs> Unless one of you guys wants to challenge. No. Nope. Okay. All right. Bob stays on the field. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else for issue update? Next is consent calendar 2A through D. Any questions or issues or anybody want to talk about any one of those here? Or do we just send them to the agenda? Bob? Um, I just have a, a comment about item D on uh, special taxes on retail marijuana. Okay. Um, there's a new uh, there's a new concept in the commercial real estate industry, and it's uh, condos for growing pot. And I don't even know if that's allowed by state law, but um, and maybe it requires some changes. But the the idea is people that don't want to grow their personal pot at home. Um, you know, this big warehouse that's kind of minimized, and you buy your little section of grow, and I, I, I'm guessing that is something the legislature would have to approve. No, of course um, I think so. But yeah, it's just uh, it's a new concept that's coming out, and the question would be, how do you, how do you regulate it? It's a different type of community garden. Yeah. Yes. Community garden. <laughs> that, that would be, yeah, a new concept of community garden. That I like is a no-no. That's a no-no. But yeah, that, that's something that's not allowed by state law now because you right. can only grow it in your home. Right. You only right. have six plants right. that you can grow. Right. So, so anyway, yeah. ready for the agenda. We'll keep an eye out for that. Can I tag on to that? Where on our income will we find the marijuana tax revenue? So on, uh, we I just sent out on Friday the uh, October report. Uh, it's included in the revenue section. We only had two businesses open for a partial time in October. It was about twelve thousand dollars in total for October. Uh, we'll be sending out here, I think, in the next um, couple weeks. We'll send out the November numbers. Uh, we have a few more businesses up and running, but each uh, month, what we'll do is uh, in the revenue section, we'll specifically call that out of the, of the monthly financial report. So I didn't see that called out. Yeah. So. Okay. It's, yeah. it's still a sales tax revenue would be reported in that line, but we'll call out how much that sales line is. Sales tax revenue. Thank you. Okay. Any objection to sending 2A through D forward? Okay. 3A, consideration of appointments to independent review board. Just, just bar, just, um, the, in your packet was the list of the recommended Actually, there are 21 individuals originally. There were there was there was 20, 20 called for, but we ended up with a tie when the committee worked on uh, the actual appointments. 
if you recall, these folks will be used for a time to serve on the independent review board panel. Uh, the council talked about this before. Uh, the idea was you, you did not have to reside in Aurora, but you were expected to either reside or work in Aurora. And then you, the council also uh, was not going to apply this whole issue about being a registered voter to the appointees to this board. Um, and then there would be three year staggered terms was the assumption was that these folks would be the initial appointees. We draw lots to determine the, the initial uh, staggering, uh, but it would be staggered uh, so that folks. Next year. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, uh, so the real question is whether the council wants to move this forward or whether you have uh, other, other uh, work you want to do on the on the list of 21 names that's on the list. I don't see any hands going up. Are you comfortable? With, oh, Molly? I haven't quite formulated my question yet. Well, we'll kill a little more time. I think it's more process-wise. No fault with the committee doing this. It seems like we're not, we're missing something. We're not getting as much a thorough review as if all, but I can't, I can't see how council could have all well, done it either. Okay, Tell me, me how it worked in committee. Tell okay. me what happens there. What happened was the three of us on committee um, got a stack of names with an application and we went through, we went through all the applications and I can't remember, we, we rated one through 20. And did you have criteria or what were you looking, did you have the names on them? Yeah, everybody had the names on them, whatever. And I mean, I don't want to speak for Bob or Brad, right, right. but I just went through the resumes and that's how I did it. And then, unbeknownst to any of us, we turned in our sheets to Skip, and then Skip added all the, did whatever, and figured out um, the, um, the ranking, the ranking from, from what Bob and Brad and I did. So if a person didn't get named or didn't get named by everybody, there was there was there were points put in there for somebody that was got no mention. So if two committee members mentioned one person, not the third. We added points because it was the lowest point total, so we had to add points. But this is really just a, a formula applied to the, the, the 20 ranking of the, of the committee members. And uh, we actually listed ties because our number of folks had the same number of points based on that, that rating. That's how we end up with 20 points versus 20. It's the top 20? The top 20. Even though they have the lowest number of points. That's right. right which is because why. Because if you rank, if you think about it, you rank this person number one, they get one point. I see. And you rank this person number 20, they get 20 points. So the exactly. lowest score. The highest number is the lowest score. Mm -hmm. Got it. Exactly. Low is good. Yeah. yeah. So what were your criteria then? Did you, I mean, I'm not sure if this was a popularity contest or uh, do these folks, do they write anything about what they're going to contribute to the process? This has never been done before. How do we guess that they're qualified, well, thoughtful well, candidates? Just to say how I did it. I mean, yeah. there were over 50 applicants, and I read all of the applications and the resumes, mm -hmm. and some of the people I knew from the community and others I didn't. And uh, we had to pick our top 20 out of 50 plus. Um, so you know, what criteria did I use? Just the resume. I, I, well, it wasn't that difficult when you have 50 yeah. and you're picking 20 and you know maybe 15 of them you know from some involvement in the community. So, and so then that made you pick them or not? I guess I'm trying to understand what sometimes some I chose sometimes and some so. I didn't. So. Well, some of them had um, Kind of public safety, mm -hmm. they were involved in either the police, the mm -hmm. and police academy or the city or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And then, and remind me, Skip, I think of these 20, only four get picked at a time That's for correct. the board for That's the correct. review. That's correct. So you've got um, 16 other people kind of waiting there. Kind of waiting their turn. Yeah. yeah. And do we have a synopsis of the board's gender, ethnicity? Kind of a, what do the 20 look like in, on one page instead of on 20 pages? Well, as you, if we did not, nor, nor can we ask what the ethnicity of the, of the individuals are. We obviously have the gender of the folks, which is obvious on, on the forms. And the ward numbers are actually on all the applications. Right. 
Right. So we just have to do the tabs right. ourselves. Right. Uh, and I would also comment, you know, from a standpoint of criteria, I, I looked at these applicants similar to how I looked at civil service commissions. Mm -hmm. So kind of the same, well, not the same role, but mm -hmm. similar atmosphere. Okay. Um, well, I appreciate so, you doing the work. I was just curious as to what went into it and how we wound up with these. That's all. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Ready to send this forward? Okay. Uh, 3B, trash enclosure. Well, yes, I, I have some concerns about this yeah. ordinance, and I, I've been following this since the early stages and you know, reading the minutes that have come out of the policy committee, and it looked like this was going to be, you know, just applying to multifamily housing where it abuts or is contiguous to single family. And the ordinance I see coming in front of me applies to all commercial real estate everywhere. And so I've got some serious concerns about unintended consequences. And uh, especially in Northwest Aurora and, you know, the Colfax Corridor section of Ward 2. Uh, because when it talks here about trash enclosures shall be constructed of material of the same or similar nature as the materials used to construct principal buildings. Um, if I've got a brick building built in 1949 in Northwest Aurora on the alley, and I go to do some type of application that requires compliance with the code, or maybe even whether I do that or not, according to the way this is written, you just have to comply. Um, I would then have to build a $4,000 brick enclosure, and then the trash company would say, well, sorry, we can't get the truck to your trash anymore, so we're not going to pick it up. So. My question is, you know, does, I mean, can we go, I don't know what we need to do. I'm happy can to I, work with the city attorney. You know, the, I, I was the Molly. person that sort of started this, and I truly meant it to be multifamily adjacent to single family. And then I missed the PEDR meeting because that was the day I finally got in to see the doctor about my back. So I missed the PEDR meeting when we actually talked about it, so I didn't see how No, you were came. there. You were there. It didn't say all this then. There was... We didn't discuss it that day. It was there. But anyway, oh, I absolutely... Hold on, one at a time. There was yeah. no intention to apply retroactively or to apply to commercial all over. It truly was, if you're a multifamily here and you're a single family here, there's going to be a trash bin here, and how can you guys get along? That's all it was supposed to be. So how it grew into... But I would have a legitimate concern, too. I don't want all that. Ball I've got Rainy and then Bob. Um, I just want to state that I, I'm really not supportive of this. Uh, you know, I can see where in residential looking on and seeing some of these trash might be a problem. The way that this ordinance is written, I'm not in support of it. Uh, and I, I thought I read in the minutes that the last policy committee that came out of that, you know, you're going to work on it, work on the final language. Mm -hmm. So the question that Jim is, can this be modified to be multifamily to yeah. single family? Or? Yes, well, I, we've been trying to respond to the, the PDR uh, on this, and uh, if that's the intent of PDR uh, to just uh, apply it to multifamily, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, this, this discussion is generated from council, and we'd like to reflect what council is instructing us to do on theirs. It was really so, the notion of looking outside the property line when you're approving the <coughs> plan. Yeah. Look up and see, oh, look, it's next to a house. We should take that into consideration. Yeah, and that's the central. That was what you were, what was start left yeah. committee as? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and is this intended to apply prospectively, like to new developments, or you're not trying I to I don't go think back we can go retroactive. No, we can extraordinarily it, It's or supposed to it apply to new trash enclosures. Right. Hold on, okay. one at a time. Sorry. Why don't we okay. ask the city attorney to answer that question, since it's a legal question? And then, okay. it, it'll only apply uh, prospectively. Um, certainly, I'm happy to add language to the body of the ordinance. We'll make that crystal clear. And that's always a good change. And certainly, uh, whatever uh, council desires, we can, we can uh, 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 put the language in that uh, we need to put in to 
make sure that we capture what the intent was uh, of, of uh, uh, Council Member Marker and the, and the committee. Okay. Bob. Well, I have one other question. And it's in uh, paragraph B, section one, paragraph B, where it says, or paragraph C, trash enclosures should be located away from residential uses. The word should is <coughs> not must, it's not shall. Mm -hmm. Should, is that intended to give flexibility to code enforcement? Well, uh, really to, uh, th this applies to new trash enclosures. And there are some situations where you could have, uh, you know, a, wall or a building or uh, a strip of landscaping that does provide uh, that that uh, buffer that we're talking about and that uh, uh, would provide uh, sufficient barriers to a, to a residential use that's next door so I was trying trying we were trying to provide a little bit of flexibility into it. okay Marsha thank you yeah this came about because one one particular incident um, where, and Molly brought it forward, where the person looked out the backyard and there's the dumpster right at the end of the door. It's a very unusual circumstance where this dumpster is that affects this homeowner. Um, so, yeah, we, we did ask to make it flexible and um, because of the trucks. You can't, you can't make a strict rule so trucks can't get in or whatever. And actually, my idea of constructed the same or similar because most trash, um, they're cinder block, aren't they? Cinder block or wood or something like that that should be similar to the building. I, I in no way envisioned it to be the same brick as the building or whatever. It's just something to blend it in is what I envisioned. Thank you, Marcia. Yeah. I think well, the whole notion was related to it never should have been approved. And so how did it get approved? Well. You look at just the postage stamp that's what's getting approved there's no requirement that says you should think about where it's going and how it's going to fit in so it was intended solely to be multi-fam to single -fam. think about how that's going to work and in that one case it sure did um and it caused extraordinary time and expense so we did want to give code enforcement or building a little right. flexibility to yeah. to look at the, the uh, the trash and the neighborhood and the, and where the buildings were going to be. So. Uh, Bob, do you want to craft some at, and or several amendments, or do you want this to go back to committee, or what's your preference? I'm happy to have it go to the floor and and have the amendments available before our meeting. Right. I think if we can work with Mike to get back to the simple concept that we, I thought, left the committee with, that would help. Sure. And Mike can wrap the words around uh, that. I would just ask a question on timing. If this is going to be our next meeting, that would be the 14th of January. January 12th. Yes. That, that All right. Mike oh, plenty of time. Uh, what I will commit to do is uh, we can talk about, uh, in fact, I'll, 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 I'd be happy to work with uh, yes. both of you. Uh, and. Uh, Review my drafts if that's all right for the rest of the council because I know that uh, this is something that council member Mark very really wanted. And of course, uh, you have comments too. And Jim and I can commit to working on some language and we can kind of review the drafts and then come up with something that they can go forward to the, to the floor. Sounds good. Happy to do it. All right. Any objection to sending this forward with an understanding there may, may well be floor amendments? All right. Thank you. <coughs> Three C, financing for the public training facility. <coughs> you don't look like Ted Frost. It's Ted Frost's younger, uglier brother. <laughs> Any questions about Three C? Any objections to sending 3C forward? Thank you. Don't go too far. <laughs> 3D. Office space city facilities for city affiliated groups. So this is an item that uh, we asked MNF to take a look at. 
uh, related to occasional requests that council receives related to uh, space and city facilities. Um, so it had gone to MNF uh, to to look at a policy, and so MNF had uh, asked us to come forward to full council. Uh, some of the items that they wanted to look at was that uh, each request should come through the full council, that groups should be affiliated with the city or council initiatives, that requests should include an end date or an annual renewal, and potentially be at least partially funded through the budget process. And so that was the recommendation of MNF, and I'll turn it over to the committee if they have anything to add. Madra? If someone uses space, do they have to provide proof of insurance? I probably have to ask our risk manager. I think they do. I'm looking at some of my folks that are nodding, and I say generally yes. Molly, I'm not clear about what exactly it means about potentially partially, at least partially funded through the budget process. Show me how that would work. Or tell me how that would look. Bob here. Uh, for example, it would be. Visitor or we okay. have okay. Uh, lodges tax that's going okay. directly to um, solar tax is on city land. Yep. We it. have made council resolutions or whatever to put that land up. <coughs> um, what are some other examples? Okay. Those are good. I guess I'm wondering about a potential or a future um, outside the city that's funded by the city that's not a city agency would be. The Nexus agencies. Um, the uh, what's the resiliency center? The resiliency is center. We put city real estate underneath them. They're okay. not a city organization. Right. Okay. No, that's but we made a decision a among this body here mm -hmm. around this table mm -hmm. that we were going to fund the uh, real estate right. availability. I guess where I'd start getting worried is a better definition of a group that is. I don't mean in keeping in terms of censoring what somebody's doing, but aligned with city priorities or of our six or 12 or 13, whatever priorities, some or another helping blow the sales forward on those things. Um, I can't imagine a, a craft club or a quilters bee or a Girl Scouts. I mean, but there's thousands of groups and organizations that are desperate for space to meet that are great organizations. And I, it seems like we should have a way of whistling those out before they get here. The, Bob, the, the policy, as I understand it, the recommendation is, I mean, if the quilting bee came to this city council here and six or more of us said that fits our priorities, then we might make space available to the quilting bee. So, I mean, it's just... It has to be six elected officials saying that's a priority and we're going to dedicate city resources to it. That was the way to weed out, you know, the 20 or 30 or 40 different organizations that might say we'd like to have a piece of free space. Or, you know. okay. Well, I, I think people using rooms for meetings is different than what this envisions. Mm -hmm. This envisions that this would be their space period mm -hmm. uh, and not like you know, trying to, a quilting group trying to use the conference room or something like that. Right. No, I understand well, that. I, guess I have a worry, though, about even the quilting group needing full-time office space because they're going to do online sales and they're going to become a commercial venture. And do we really have enough space for city staff that we're going to be doling out? no. I'm, okay, but how do we know that? I mean, who's going to tell us, tell you guys? Well, the one thing that's missing here, and I think probably needs to go back to committee, if nothing else, or to the city attorney's office or somewhere, is that if council is comfortable with the idea of policy, there ought to be some written procedures to go along with it. How do you apply, for example? Uh, what information do you have to provide? Um, should it go to a council committee before it comes to study session? And if so, which committee? Should it contain a recommendation from the city manager's office? Probably. That would address but, the space issue. But we don't have that. So right. I think what is being suggested here by the committee is that council decide 
if you're comfortable with the policy or not. And if you're comfortable with the policy, then we'll ask the manager and the attorney to get together and identify a recommended process which will come back to us for approval. Am I incorrect in that? Okay. But at that point, the policy will be approved even if the procedures um, the procedures if will you, implement the policy. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. It's not like we're rediscussing, right. reconsidering the policy after we see right. the procedures. Right. I think the question is, here is approval of the policy. If you say yes, you're comfortable with the policy, then we'll ask them to go work on procedures. If you say you're not comfortable with <coughs> the policy, then it stops here. Marsha? I'll say I'm not comfortable with the policy. I, I think it sets a precedent even though it, it only takes six to say yes um, I don't know I am kind of feel like Molly if, if we could have a hundred people and then we'll let one group down but won't let another and feelings are going to get hurt and we're going to get questioned on what are our motives for saying yes what are our motives for saying no uh, this is, says office space in a city facility, so it could be the library. I guess realistically, it could be here. It could be senior center. I mean, it could be anywhere. So uh, I'm, I'm just not comfortable with that. Brad. Well, right now we have no policy. So if someone were to come in and want office space, we have no criteria by which to say yes or no. So I think this is a. a I think developing a policy is what we should do, and then because you know we need to have some criteria, which kind of what you talked about, Mayor. But you know, because right now we have we have nothing. Barb, Debbie, Molly. Um, I guess I totally agree because um, on some of the stuff that's been mentioned here, um, you know, those are areas that that, as Bob said six members of council, we have agreed to do that. But we really don't um, have anything to say that if six members of council next week wanted to let the cooking club from whatever come in, <coughs> they could. So I, I, I truly feel we need to get a policy that it has to be something, you know, verbiage and M&F, and I think that's absolutely right, Mayor, that in my mind, it has to be something that is enhancing the city of Aurora. And I'm not sure how you put that into to legalese of whatever. Debbie, Molly, Bob, Bob, Greeny. <laughs> Debbie. <coughs> So I'm really comfortable with the, the concept of the policy, and I agree that we need more specific before we can approve anything, but I really like the idea of the policy, and I, as long as it, um, as long as the policy contains wording that it, that whatever we're addressing needs to be, be in line with our, our council priority, and then the procedures are for more specific, I would go with that, but I'm very comfortable with the concept. Molly. Thanks. I love policies for anything, so I absolutely am all there about the policy. But I'd like the policy to start with wording that would be an automatic exclusion. I'm seeing, in my mind, risk management needing to weigh in on this. What if the group has a lobbying component or an advocacy component? What if the group is generating revenue, either through the sale of products or through door-to-door -door soliciting? Um, there's just all kinds of things that a group could or couldn't do that are perfectly legitimate for that group to do that don't belong on city property. And then I wonder about our status as a governmental entity. Does our governmental immunity extend to those? Do we? If we have the cooking club over there and they're selling recipes, and do we charge tax for them? I mean, it's, I just think we need to be real clear about only if or not at all if or somehow or another to weed out the time that it's going to take to go through things that aren't in keeping with the council and the city's priorities. I mean, that's a nice way to spell out what we're doing, and that 
anybody could say they're doing it, but we would know if they're. The other huge concern I have is that language about potentially be funded through the budget. So if I hang up a shingle and rent out and get some space from the city, well, that was another question. Are we charging rent? Um, but if I get my shingle and hang it out here, I got my question. Never mind. Um, what? Funding through funding. the budget. Yeah, yeah. So then do, the next do I get to come and say, okay, give me money now because i got space in the city. I, I would, I mean, it infers that you have to have both. I know, you should be funded through the city first. Right. It was intended the other way around. But you should say that the city somewhere. And I would assume the city attorney and the city manager okay. in bringing back their recommended okay. procedures, they will be answering those questions and making recommendations in each case. Okay. Bob, Bob Green. I think we're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist here. I mean, I can only recall something like this coming to us maybe once every two or three years. And so you deal with it on an ad hoc basis. Uh, it just seems like you're inviting people, once you create a policy like this, to come down and start looking around, you know, uh, where's my furniture and where can I uh, stake my claim, you know. Bob and Rainey. So, and I agree with uh, what the mayor said about setting up a policy for how it comes to council. I just wanted to point out that this, this wording says that the group would be affiliated with the city or city initiatives. So it's not just anything. It has to be one of our city initiatives or priorities. And then, you know, on the budget, we've already talked about the fact that it, it also has to have a budget allocation from city council. Rainy. Just a question if the council might be feel better with rather than a, major, a majority approving it, a super majority approving. Okay. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, the uh, I think there are two questions that we have to answer. One is one is do we want the policy? And then two is what Rini just brought up, whether it should be a majority of council or a super majority of council making the decision. But let's take the policy question first, because if people say no, we don't have to take up the second. Okay? So, um, I, again, if you say yes, then you are supporting that the requests come through council affiliated with city or, or council initiatives, include mandate or annual review, and potentially at least partially funded through the budget process, the city manager's office and the city attorney's office, if we say yes, will develop procedures. And they will come back to us as well. So how many are comfortable with the policy? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's more than enough. Um, so the next question is, in terms of approval, let's, we get the procedures done and we've got the policy in place. Um, should the approval be by a majority or supermajority? So how, uh, since you raised the question of supermajority, we'll ask it that way. How many people would like to see a supermajority in terms of approval? One, two, three, four, five, six, that's enough. So it's a super majority. Now, did, I, I should have asked you, and I'm sorry, do you, do you mean eight members? Yes, eight. Eight members, sorry. So eight would have to approve it. Um, and I would like to have this come back by the first meeting in February, if we could. Back to, straight back to study session, right? Not, not back to Yeah, back to study session. All right. Okay. Thank you. 3E. Uh, <laughs> Nexus funding recommendations. Mary. Well, our Nexus committee had the same task that we've had for the last several years, and it's difficult because we had over a million dollars in requests, and we have the same amount of money that we've had over the last two or three years, which is about 680000 
for the standard nexus um, allotment and $144,450 for that triage program between Arapahoe House and Aurora Mill Hill. So we had about $225,000 um, less money than what we needed to fulfill completely their request. We looked at their proposals. They were pretty much in the ballpark that they've been over the last few years. So we thought it was prudent just to recommend inline funding that we've done over the last couple of years. So I was thinking maybe you, if you had any questions, we could, between Terry and Nancy and I, we could answer them regarding our recommendations. Rainy. Um, this, you know, I brought this up a long time ago, but I guess if this wasn't even considered that, you know, if the state were to um, end photo red light, you know, we need to be prepared for these agencies to be supported in some way. And the city manager did say that there was enough to cover them open for two years. Well, the fund balance in the Nexus program is about, is about enough to cover them for one year. Okay, uh, so for one year. But that assumes no continuation of any uh, <coughs> uh, surcharge funds as opposed to just the amount that's photo red light. So that's your probably right, it's about two years if you're just factoring in the photo red light part of okay. the program. So I had requested that we, we hold back 5% to cover what we gave out last year, that 5% of that be held back to be put into an account um, for a rainy day. Well, we do have a surplus. I don't know if Jason can... Yes, yeah, so well, we've got you know, a, a fund balance to, to that point that, 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 that does give us sort of a, a glide path in the event that the state discontinues put our red light at the state level. So we, we do have some fund balance addition. Right. Okay. I'm good. Okay. All right. Molly. I love what you did. That's fine. Thank you very much. Good implementation of a great program. Um, by the third year here, I'm getting concerned about the triage project. I love the money for a I love the money for a raffle house, and I love the outcomes of the program because it's far better service both for the officers and for the community to allow to, the triage opportunity to divert from the ER into the appropriate program. That's what we're all about. My angst is that we may as well just write a check to the two hospital emergency rooms because they're the ones that are accruing the savings for not having people tie up the ER and use the staffing inappropriately, but instead get to the right place. So we're doing, the program is wonderful, but in my opinion, the hospitals need to contribute to the... the there to has been uh, one meeting with the hospitals. Okay. There's another meeting to be set up with a limited number of hospital representatives rather than the full array of folks that they brought to the first meeting. Um, everybody understands the purpose of the second meeting. The purpose of the second meeting is to get the hospitals involved. They understand that. So um, that, that process is moving, but there was, no, there was no opportunity during the holiday season to try to get everybody together for another meeting before the first of the year. So it will occur after the first of the year. So we're working on it. It's just not there yet. One of the hard parts um, is that these, um, we sometimes have all of our platinum members mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, the fire, and, fire. well, you can use a mint, but there are platinum members that we mm -hmm. see a lot. And um, one of the things, and this is working with the fire department, um, the hospitals are not going to be and yet, if this program wasn't there, there would be an increase. <coughs> so part of the problem is trying to get the numbers and the statistics to say, these are ones that are going into the program, that if they weren't going into the program, um, you would be seeing them. And then the other side of the program is that they are going out and visiting many of the platinum members before they before they think them, about dialing, yeah. Before they think about dialing 911. Mm -hmm. And so 
those numbers are very hard to actually um, quantify because um, instead of calling 18 times a month, they're now only calling nine times a month right. and going being transferred to the ER. So it, it's kind of difficult, and that's what um, the acute treatment um, facility is trying to get some of that stuff to get to the hospitals because in talking, because they have been talking to the hospitals and the hospitals are basically saying, we don't see any difference. And so um, it's kind of a chicken and an egg sort of thing that you're not seeing them as much, but you're not seeing really a decrease in, in the ER stuff. Well, I, if I could, I think is when we brought the pilot concept to council, yeah. it was that we'd have a way to, a, an opportunity to do that counting and not have to rely on the hospitals to say what's going on because we have our own data. Um, we do. Pardon? We do. Exactly, exactly. And the hospitals don't agree with them. I, so, I, yeah. I get that. But I'm, after two years of a pilot, and I appreciate the meeting, Steve, I think they're absolutely what has to happen. Um, and there's never going to be a formula or a this many right. people times this much savings equals this much contribution from the hospital. It ain't that clear. It's just, it isn't a big scheme of things either. But um, the way this is written, it's two separate questions. So I can support my Nexus program and not support the funding for the triage. Not because I don't approve of the triage program, but until I see the money, honey, um, there's been three years worth of talk. And I need to see a check before I'm willing to pay their bottom line for the city tax dollars red light revenue dollars. Okay, um, this is a decision that's made here, not on the floor. And um, there are actually two questions, one for the Nexus and one for the triage pilot program. Um, so let's take Nexus first. <laughs> Council approve of the 2015 funding recommendations of the $680,000. Can I see a show of hands? Okay, that's good. Next <coughs> is the triage pilot program. Um, rec the, the request was roughly 180. The recommendation is 144. Can I see a show of hands of those who support the triage program? program? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And as it relates to the triage program, we'll continue to follow up with the hospitals and see if we can make some progress. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, um, IGA with Douglas County for County Line Road, Samson Gulch. going on here is Whispering Pines is a uh, residential community development and as part of their development they needed to extend a roadway to make connection to Piney Lake Road slash Powhatan Road and um, back in 2006 when this was first started uh, High Plains Country Club which is now called Blackstone was uh, also in the mix here as far as we have a roadway here that straddles corporate lines uh, along County Line Road in here, but it, from this stretch of road here to here is totally within Douglas County. In a spirit of cooperation with Douglas County, uh, we uh, drafted a, a, an IGA to identify design criteria and who will uh, basically own and maintain that road. And since the development of Whispering Pines and High Plains Country Club uh, is all in Aurora, uh, we are taking over the uh, ownership and maintenance of, of that road extension. The road extension from here to here provides a critical uh, connection between Powhatan and unfortunately I didn't get my map up here to show it connects to Aurora Parkway as well. Um, so it provides two points of access, provides a regional kind of connection to help uh, take some traffic off of uh, some of these other roads or 
not necessarily to do that, but also just just provide you know better access overall. <coughs> and with that, um, staff would really like to see this uh, move forward, and I'll open it up for uh, discussion. Questions? <coughs> Thank you. Any um, any objection to moving this forward? All right. Good. Thank you. New annexation area proposal. Bob. So we are in front of you this evening with a proposal for moving ahead with uh, uh, establishing a new annexation area uh, in the city. And um, first we provided some mapping. Um, you described an area the last time we discussed this, so we thought we'd provide some maps around that, which will help you um, with your deliberations. This is basically the, uh, the uh, a depiction of the area that was described at the meeting. Um, it's 54.7 uh, square miles of uh, new annexation area. The proposal would be to, at least at some point, establish in the comprehensive plan a, an annexation boundary for this area. Uh, just some information about it. Uh, this, is, this map shows some of the major ownerships uh, within this area. Uh, you have... Uh, the proposed annexation here in the uh, hatching uh, further north is the uh, uh, Prosper proposal and all of the land down here which is approximately 41 square miles is the state land board so we have about 4.7 miles in the annexation uh, boundary 7.7 uh, .7 square miles in the Prosper project and uh, approximately 40, 41 square miles in the uh, state land board uh, holdings. Uh, in terms of existing land use, it's mostly all, as you would expect, rural agricultural land. There are four square miles of large lot uh, divisions uh, in the yellow are, are lots that actually have residences on them. But primarily, this is an area, as you would expect, that's vacant and agricultural land. This shows the school districts. You have uh, a portion in the Aurora Public Schools uh, and a portion in Cherry Creek Schools and the rest in the, in the Bennett School District. Uh, just thinking about, there are different ways to think about the physical characteristics of the land. Certainly one of them is to think about the watersheds. Uh, what the watershed sheds provide is the way that uh, uh, water flows by gravity and of course uh, eventually how uh, that can be useful in thinking about uh, utility planning um, uh, of all kinds. So basically you have three watersheds, the Sand Creek, um, a little bit of the first creek, both of which flow into the existing city, um, the, the Box Elder uh, watershed which flows up towards DIA. Uh, in terms of the, the water districts, um, it's important to note that uh, there's a large area of land that's primarily coterminous with the uh, state land board holdings that is uh, committed to be served by the Rangeview Water District. There's a commitment with the state land board. Um, they have a few smaller areas, um, but the, uh, the state land board land, there, there is a commitment to be served by the Rangeview water district and of course the city is negotiating for a new reservoir uh, uh, within that area. Very interesting uh, is the state land board land. Um, uh, a number of years ago the, the city with Arapahoe County and a number of other stakeholders worked with the state land board to establish what's called the stewardship, stewardship trust for the state land board land that is south of uh, Quincy Road. Um, the intention being that that area would be maintained for conservation in the future. There would be oil drilling and some other uses, but primarily conservation and that there would be potential for development north of Quincy Road. Um, a lot has happened since then. The, the Quincy uh, 
road development deal did not happen. Um, and um, currently there is consideration by the state land board to, to uh, take uh, a couple of areas in their land, which you see in the hatched, um, out of the conservation um, uh, designation with the potential for some development. So more to come on that. Um, the decisions aren't made yet for that land. Um, um, it will certainly be something that we'll want to follow as a city. So what we're proposing is to uh, uh, proceed with, with a study which would establish, um, ultimately uh, be intended to establish new annexation boundaries in the comprehensive plan. Um, for various reasons, we're proposing to break it down um, into phases, uh, phase one, two, and three. I'll go back. The idea being that uh, phase one would include an area, the, the very specific boundaries to be determined, but at minimum they would include the proposed uh, annexation area and the prosper uh, portion of the study area. Phase two would be other areas um, north of Quincy, and phase three would be uh, the areas of the state land board south of Quincy Road. Um, to be undertaken at some point in the future once the status of that is determined in terms of its uh, potential for conservation. So I'll go back to the table. So we're, oh, we're proposing to uh, have a three-phased a three approach. Um, each phase would have these components. There'd be a land use component which would look at uh, proposed land use, zoning, using an approach similar to E-470, um, would look at um, any potential for conservation or open space within large-scale open space within those areas, um, would look at phasing um, and growth management, how to best think about how development might proceed in an orderly fashion, look at transportation planning, what would the network be for the major streets at a very high level, and other major components of transportation. Look at fiscal impact, what, is, what are the uh, uh, financial implications and needs, service needs uh, associated with, with the new areas. Um, and we are asking for a uh, contract um, uh, project manager position, which would be for the, the life of this project um, to, to help us uh, manage this. Um, and again, breaking it into phase one and phase two with, with phase three to be determined in the future, um, uh, we would suggest that the, the cost, we've, we've talked with various consultants, the cost of the phase one uh, would be somewhere between 350,000 and 370, phase two, uh, 220 to 225. I think with, what we intend to do is keep within this overall amount. I think when we got into scoping it, the, the, the breakdown between the two phases in terms of the cost might shift one way or the other, depending on how we draw through uh, the actual boundaries for the phases. Um, and then after that, um, in addition to that, there would be the, the uh, water department studies, which would have to do with drainage and uh, wastewater and uh, the, the integrated water plan. Um, for a total of, uh, for phase one, of six, 635,000 to 655,000, and phase two, uh, 370 to 375. In terms of the, uh, I don't know if, if, if you want me to just jump ahead, I know you might have questions for that, or, or maybe I'll go ahead to, the, uh, to, to this part and then we can go back if you would like. But essentially, we're talking about phase one being a, a 2015. Um, project with the intention of completing a comp plan amendment, uh, addressing the, the annexation proposal um, by the end of 2015. And then with um, um, the, the second phase being a, a 2016 project. Um, so that's basically the proposal. Um, and the question is, does council wish to proceed with the phase study approach that we've recommended? Barb and Buffer, 
Um, I guess yes. My, my comment or question is because we're including it, and and I read in some of the backup that we're not going to take water off necessarily off the the rain tree property. Um, so. Um, Why are we you? Why are we doing so much on the range tree property? Because my issue is, yes, we may need it for a reservoir, um, but we don't. We, I, I don't. We would definitely have to change our policy if we took water from there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Marsha, you want to help me with that some. Yeah, the the phased approach, the range view area, is actually not until phase three, and so there are no costs or anything. The only range view park that would be included is that area in Warsaw, Quincy, which right. was part okay. of the original development <clears throat> proposal. But all the area south of Quincy right. is not in so the phase. So I'm, yeah, okay. So the <clears throat> whole water, because, right. you know, that we're not going to be, because that's a whole other policy issue right. as far as that whole water stuff. That's right. Bob Broom and Bob Laguerre. How old are excuse me, how old are our existing master utility master plans that you're gonna be updating? Are they in need of being updated anyway? They are actually the integrated water master plan <coughs> process is underway today as we speak, and so is our stormwater master plan. So those two are in process as we speak and we will need to update the wastewater master plan within the next probably year. So, so this would be just an add-on to those updates? Some portion of this would be added on to those updates. Bob here. So and I, I have some questions on the, I presume we're, my question is about the boundaries. And uh, I know that we extended it to Quail Run <laughs> road because there's going to be an interchange someday at Quail Run and I-70. But I also thought that we were going to go up to I-70. So what what did I miss that took that mile from I-70 to 6th Avenue out of the picture? This is already in the annexation area. Of the city. Oh, it's already yeah. there. Okay, that would explain it. So um, I just wanted to add a comment. In looking at this map, and the nature of the parcels be between Imbolt Road and Quail Run Road. Um, I know a bunch of those owners on those little tiny rectangles, and we would have a firestorm like we've never seen um, once they get wind of the fact that we're there in Aurora's annexation boundary area. So it's just a thought to consider um, if we're proceeding with this. If we have the two miles along I-70, and we and we drop it over to Imbos Road instead of Quail Run Road. You eliminate all of that and still address the uh, the individuals, <coughs> entities that have submitted the application. So it's just something to consider looking at that map with the yellow rectangles up there. Uh, would you put up the calendar of activities for me? Sure. <coughs> this one? Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, there we go. go back. There you go. There you go. The Dr. Cog Urban Growth Area Amendment uh, it doesn't year. start until, um, phase one doesn't start until July of next year. And then there's a six month gap. Uh, does that mean that there's no action taken on phase one until we go through phase two? Well, I have to tell you, I think at this point, um, we included Dr. Cog as an uncertainty, and we would not necessarily consider that part of the uh, consulted project. That would be work that 
staff and city council would need to do, and it may take longer. I, I, I'm afraid it's just a bit uncertain at this point. Uh, with the go-ahead, I think that would be one of the immediate things to explore would be to, to figure out how we would address that. And is there anything to prohibit, since it's going to be out of, since it's going to be independent, is there anything to prohibit starting the discussions earlier? I, I'm sorry. Bob? Um, I have a meeting on January 13th to just start uh, understanding what the Dr. Cog process is with, with several other people to, to just give in front of Brad Calvert and some of the other Dr. Cog staff to, to, I don't know that it's necessarily getting the ball rolling on the process, but it's understanding the process. It, is there any problem with making, having city staff involved with that so that they're... Not at all. I got faith. Okay, go back to the map with what Bob Laguerre was talking about. See if I can get this. <laughs> there, there, there we this go. This one. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, Bob, basically, you're, you are talking about that area between Jewel and Alameda and uh, Imboden and Quail Run. Is that it? Did I point to the right? That is correct. And if, if you go, go one map to the left, if you could, Bob. One. Oh, the other one? No, the one with the owner parcel. Sorry. Th yeah. This one actually shows even more so. I mean, you have people that have, they didn't build a house yet, but they have that little parcel and they think they're going to build a house on it. Um, yeah, that's that's the area there. So your recommendation would be just to move that entire north-south line uh, one mile to the west. That is correct, from Alameda. I mean... Well. Could cut it yeah. off here. You could yeah. actually do this too. Bob Rip? Yeah, but I mean, we don't annex property unless they come in and ask to be annexed. And so if there are a lot of people that own lots out there there's nothing on, uh, maybe they'd like the option of being able to annex it as opposed to trying to, to drill wells and, you know, and that whole thing. Bob is here. Who's going to explain that? Well, that's what we got staff for, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a Dr. Cobb. <laughs> well, again, this, Brad. Yeah, I mean, we don't, or I don't know what those folks out there think about being annexed into the city. They may like it for the water, for the police and fire, or they may not. I mean, unless. Uh, Maybe Bob, you have some more insight, but I don't know. It's hard to, for me to say uh, that they'd be negative, unless you know something I don't. Well, you well, they, they're out there because they don't want to be in the city. Uh, I mean, that's. The, does anyone remember the town of Foxfield? Yeah. Before it was in the city right. of Aurora. Right. And the reaction they had to the perceived threat that we were going to annex them. Mm -hmm. um, that's exactly what we're going to have here. Barb. Well. I guess there's, and, and you're, you're correct, Bob. I mean, everything that we went through regarding Foxfield, but we, we even sent them registered letters saying we weren't going to have it, and they, they didn't believe us. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we need to go that far east. I mean, I can see, I can see it both ways. Um, they may have never even thought of the fact that they hypothetically could be annexed in the city of Aurora. It's part of just a study area. That's all it is, is that you have that potential. But um, that's kind of a lot of users out there, or small parcels, it looks like. So I have no problem going a little further. Well, again, this doesn't go to the floor or yeah. anything. Whatever you want to decide, you decide here for the purposes of initiating the effort. So, Marsha? Wouldn't we want to get the whole prosper instead of just two-thirds of it? 
Yeah, the well, again, the part that it's up north of that line on 6th Avenue is already right. in our study area. This is identifying additional uh, study area. So, so the north you're at, part is already there. The north part's yeah. already there. Right. So we're taking mm -hmm. in the rest They could come in today and ask for annexation. Okay. Okay. So Why don't we just make the line straight and <clears throat> take off the section to the east? Yeah. Say again? Just the make the line straight and we'll right. take the section to the east side. Just stop it at Quail Run Road. Right. Well, yeah. uh, I, I think that the idea there was we wanted to have control of Quail Run Road in those two miles yeah. from Alameda to I-70 because there would be an interchange there. Mm -hmm. so. Or at least the potential for those owners to annex. Okay, so and have control. So what about going two sections? The two sections, just to the end of that thirty-five there. Um, what is it, Cavanaugh? Manila Road. I can't. I don't know. I can't read what the road is. Well, Manila. Let's be clear, yeah. Bob. Are you talking about the stuff that's out, way out east, or are you talking about the stuff that is between Alameda and Jewel, further west? Which are you talking well, about? Well, I, I wasn't speaking the farthest <laughs> east, but that's a good point. If, uh, as Greeny just said, if, if it stopped at Manila from I-70 to Alameda along Manila, and then it went west to Imboden Road, and then dropped south. So your suggestion is to take off the two areas that are on that map that are small, small ownerships, so right. will. Heavily populated with small ones. Otherwise, the lines on the map you're comfortable with. I would be. Yeah, I'd go along fine. with that. All right. Uh, any other comments or questions? All right. Bob Laguerre's suggestion is then that we would take off those two uh, areas. Bob, you shouldn't have left the yeah, map. I'm sorry. There you go. There you go. Just cut out the four square miles. Your choices are the map as it is, or taking off the hot, the, the smaller lot ownerships between Alameda and Sixth at the far east end, and taking out um, those ownerships between Alameda and Jewel further west, and basically uh, running the line north south. Um, along Imboden rather than Quail Run. To about Jewel and then go back east on Jewel? Yeah. Okay. okay. So those are your choices. Got so you. let's take Bob's proposed amendment first. Everybody understand? Yeah. All right. How many are in favor of Bob's amendment? One, two, three, four, plenty. All right. That's what we do. All right. Please modify the maps accordingly. And uh, please make sure that you have the modified maps available for this meeting that uh, uh, Councilmember Roth is going to have. Um, anything else on this issue? Molly? We modified the map, but I didn't get where we actually did the yes or no question. In the back of Or did I miss that? Oh, you you want the yes or no question on everything? No, no. I just, just a, yeah. are we? Well, I are thought we, we answered the yes or no question at the last meeting. Okay. I think we did. We answered the question at the last meeting, and so the, you were you were you were sure. nursing your back. I think. Um, is it, there's not a, nothing written here where it says questions for council? Yes, right here. Right. There is. Okay, so I thought there was a question about the phases of the study. Well, because it's not on the paper. That's not mine, but let's ask. It. I know, no, it's not All on right. the paper version. Let me see a show of hands. I want to go with the recommendation. Okay, that's I want a chance to vote. All right. Okay, um, council reports. CML National League of Cities. Anybody have? One? Just a question, Brad, for 
Roberto, I think, if he's here, maybe skip up. So traditionally, we've gone back to Washington in March and visited with our delegation. We're, we're going to bring that up at the first meeting in, in January. Okay, so I've, I've already made my plane reservations in my hotel based on our custom for right. years past. So well, you may be going anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. You may not be the only one. There may be others who have said that. We thought we were going to be really tight on time tonight. So we don't have all the information that we need. You guys have been very uh, closed-lipped this evening. So as a result, you <laughs> saved us about 45 minutes. <laughs> the good news is it, we'll get upstairs sooner for the executive session, and we probably won't need the one after the meeting. That's the good news. The bad news is we can't talk about that right now because we don't have everything here. Okay. Okay? What do we need? Roberto was good going to gather a bunch of information and have it in, in the backup for everyone. So for next, for January? For January. Okay. First meeting in January. Okay. The 12th. Gotcha. All right, legislative update. Mayor Pro Tem, Hunter Holt. What would we update? No. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Hunter Holt. Uh, we haven't been able to get. Um, a meeting scheduled with Representative Fields, but I think we've met with everyone else. And so um, the new committee begins in January, and that's that. That's all I have. Okay. Any questions, Molly? In the CML newsletter, one of these days, there was reference to the CML initiating a bill. Um, one about the urban renewal process, but the other to create equal opportunity for local siting and enforcement issues for beer, wine, and spirit sales rooms as compared to all other duly licensed establishments for on-premises consumption. I'm wondering if we're paying attention to this and if we know how it would impact our work. We are. This is, uh, the intent of this is potentially, is essentially uh, microbreweries who are adding tap rooms uh, adjacent to their facilities, their basically manufacturing facilities that currently do not have local ability to review those in terms of a zoning change so that you have what some people would consider a bar that would be opening up as a tap room adjacent to a neighborhood or adjacent to an area that may be sensitive. CML's tracking are trying to have legislation that would allow local or support legislation that would allow local governments to have a review of those sites if and when they have some particular impacts, as long as the council has an opportunity to take a look at those. This is all just in response to a lot of microbreweries, especially in Denver, that are opening up tap rooms that really don't have any type of regulation right now in terms of how they're zoned or how they're operated, hours, traffic, etc. So it's trying to close that, that loophole. Or trying to make it local. Trying to make it, well, allow locals to be able to have their regular zoning uh, regulation uh, imposed on, on those. So the Craft Brewers Association, all those folks are being consulted as well. They don't want to create any impacts, but right now it's kind of a, a loophole. Got it. Okay, thank you. Dr. Cobb. I handed out this 11 by 17. Uh, Matt Callison sent out an email mm -hmm a week and a half or so ago kind of talking about the projects that we got funded but I wanted to just take a couple of minutes and, and explain uh, what what the process is and how we got these so the, the portion that's circled in the upper right hand corner of the first page that's in thousands of dollars so uh, there's hundred thirty one million dollars in, in phase one and phase one and phase two of the funding for Dr. Cox projects phase one is a set criterion that each project is graded and it's really cut and dried. Phase two is based more on equity, so smaller communities get uh, a more of a fair shape that might but not be able to submit projects that are that would qualify on the criteria in, in the, uh, the grading system. So this is just the phase one portion of, of the funding, and as you can see, it's 131 million, 118,000. And I've highlighted in pink the areas that each municipality can um, submit a project or projects in. So there's bike and ped, transit service, transit passenger, roadway capacity, roadway operational, 
roadway reconstruction studies and other enhanced projects. So those are the areas where, where all the municipalities can submit. And again, there's 53 municipalities that are that are represented in Dr. Cog. And so I wanted to point out that in this phase, if you the yellow highlight, the top of the top seven projects that were funded for bike and pet projects, four of them were in the city of Vermont. So we did extremely well. Uh, kudos to staff and uh, um, as I there was a little bit of browsing at the Dr. Cog table that we had four out of seven, and yeah, Aww. and that's just one of the. Okay, so I take everything back. You can, you can, you can whine, but Aurora got four out of seven. They got lots of fun. Good job. So do anyway, I want to point that out. And this is this is staff. This is a means. That's all I had. Thanks, sir. Uh, the Simmons Redevelopment Authority update. Councilmember Monier is here. Um, I think it probably would be valuable, though, to say that that, um, that uh, Councilmember Versons and Councilmember Monier and I, who represent the city on the FRA board, have had some discussions about um, trying to make sure that when all of the um, various studies that are going on right now, which include the entire campus master plan, the TOD study and a housing study, when all of those are completed and that they've been joined together and massaged and everybody understands what they all mean or don't mean and how they're all put together, that we would make sure that we would have a uh, full uh, briefing for council. And I don't just mean 5, 10, 15 minutes. I mean more like an hour, hour and a half if necessary on either a special study session agenda or a workshop agenda so that we can have the right people here uh, to provide the right information and um, go through everything that needs to be addressed. So that's in process. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Okay. Other than that, if you haven't been over there recently, um, the hundred and round numbers, hundred and 15,000 square foot new building is coming along very, very well and um, will be finished in time for uh, the new school year to begin uh, in the summer. So that will be good news. Uh, E470. Oh. What is the impact on the flap around the VA? The, the VA and who's building and who's getting paid and what's going on? Um, the Kiewit Turner group is supposed to be back at work this week. Um, the VA, Congress, and Kiewit Turner, Turner have all agreed on um, the Corps of Engineers coming in to do some kind of limited oversight, at least initially. They've agreed on the amount of money it takes to get back to work and do the foreseeable future, evidently there's still some discussion related to um, what may turn out to be the last 150 to 200 million dollars project. We have all agreed to put that off and take it up in the next Congress. But they should they should be out there literally working. They should have been out there today. Thank you, Bob. Bob. Just as a, a side comment on that, so the uh, the company I work for is a sub subcontractor doing a small portion of work out there, and Kiwa Turner did send out letters to all subcontractors um, this week, telling them we're we're back, we're back in the saddle, and you know you can report back to the site. So, uh, sometime uh, in next spring, it <clears throat> might be helpful to do a little bus trip out. To Simmons and go through it and talk about what's going on and what's planned for each individual part that's left because uh, you know it gets kind of confusing after a while. As to how that's and maybe we tie that into the presentation. Good idea. Yeah. Maybe that's where we have a workshop. Maybe that's where we have a workshop. Because, you know, out at the FRA or someplace out there. Yep. And actually have the workshop there. We could do that. Yeah. That's a restaurant at the golf course. 
or the wellness center or the wellness center there's lots of places yeah. out there that have a workshop okay um e470 council member Broom, i'm glad you're here you're on here yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've been to a meeting in three months yeah. so uh, nothing new other than they continue to set records on traffic. So the fact that 225 opened, which some thought might cut down on traffic on E470, has not. And um, they will be in their 2015 budget, which has been approved by the E470 board. There's Four million dollars for Sixth Avenue in their 2015 budget. Um, the verbal comment from the executive director was that's two thousand dollar grant, two thousand dollar loan. So, oh, you know, we got to work that out. But nonetheless, it's been approved in the budget. And um, Many, 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 many years ago, when the ultimate configuration was identified for E470, or what everybody thought would be the ultimate configuration, there were several future interchanges um, that would be added. And the first one on that ultimate configuration that was approved and it is now open and operating was. Quebec at the north end, E470 in Quebec at the north end, uh, and it opened up, uh, I think, 1st of December, and they're running it free for a month. In Aurora, um, the one future interchange that is uh, on that ultimate configuration is 48th Avenue. So eventually there will be a 48th Avenue interchange, unless we want to trade it for something else. Okay. AEDC. Um, they have exceeded their goals for jobs for the year. Um, I'll have the final number in January when they add their December totals to that. Can I? Debbie? Who's the goal for the board? The board. And how is that, how do, how do they do that? That I don't know. Okay. It's virtually through a recommendation from staff. Okay. And then the board decides on the recommendation. Great. Thank you. I mean, the simplest form, that's it. Uh, Accelerate Colorado. Um, the dates for going back to D.C. have been announced. Uh, June 9th through the 11th is the is the DC trip, and then they will be um, doing working on what we're going to be discussing um, going back the issues for DC. Okay. 225 fast tracks update. Oh, again, Councilmember Monier is here. Mac, do you want to <laughs> step in? Council. Uh, we prepared a, uh, a, a summary uh, on the uh, recent activities. Work continues uh, starting on the south from the Isla station. Uh, there are 10 photos uh, included in, in the packet as well. Uh, Isla station uh, platform canopies are being constructed. The overhead power poles, uh, part of the overhead catenary system is, is, uh, is beginning to, uh, to be placed. Uh, continued trackway work, uh, finishing the uh, formal trackway up uh, adjacent to Abilene uh, Street up to the uh, Mississippi Avenue rail bridge approach is underway. Uh, the staining of the, uh, of the uh, girders and piers for all the rail bridge bridges are, uh, is underway now. Uh, as, we, as we work uh, continuing north, uh, efforts are, are underway in terms of placing the north sidewall curb gutter uh, and uh, and retaining walls on exposition on the north side of exposition working from Abilene East to Sable 
Uh, that work is underway. I might add that exposition is open to traffic, one lane in each direction, and left turns uh, at selected points. So access to those businesses uh, is being delivered. Uh, and we deliberately uh, identified a no work construction uh, area through the uh, through the holiday season for to aid in ease of access for the for the uh, uh, retail establishments uh, in, in the immediate metro center area there. Uh, as we work north at our metro center station, uh, you can see the uh, drainage work, the storm sewer uh, drainage work has started with the large uh, uh, pipe uh, being uh, being placed uh, in that area there. Uh, as we continue north over Tollgate Creek, just north of 13th Avenue, south of Colfax, uh, those girders are being placed to accomplish a crossing from the east side of Tollgate Creek immediately adjacent to 225 to the west side and then connecting into the Colfax Station Bridge. That's the aerial bridge uh, station there. And then work continues north uh, adjacent to the Fitzsimmons Parkway uh, through, a, through a side entire alignment up to Peoria uh, with activities on retaining walls, uh, station uh, excavation and placement, and then the great separation of the rail bridge uh, over Peoria uh, from the north side of Fitz Parkway to the to the west side of Peoria, and then over, uh, the, accomplishing a span over uh, Sand Creek uh, at that point, and photos are in place on that. Lastly, uh, the canopy structures are being placed for the East Carter rail line at the Peoria station. So we're available for any additional questions and information to follow up. Molly? Compliments to you for all of that. Several of the people that have written me Christmas cards have said, did you know you're building light rail up there? It looks really interesting. So compliments on that. Team effort. There you go. But I was really impressed today, at least I think I saw, the existing trade cars that are running, uh, whatever they did. But they're all red and green, painted or decorated or something. Has anybody else noticed that? Am I the only one imagining it? I'll have to look again. But I was coming down 225 with Parker. Okay, they do wrap those. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Those trains. Maybe we finally got some. Any other questions? Go I have a, I have a visitor or update. Oh, You're ready? Okay, yes. Yeah, one on the list, but I, I got one. Um, uh, Gary Weed, who's the president and CEO of Visitor Aurora, and Tom Barrett, who runs our Park Recreation and Open Space Department. Uh, accepted the International Softball Association Senior Softball USA Complex of the Year for the Sports Park. Uh, the Sports Park was presented uh, the award based on an, an annual event developed by Visit Aurora and Pros called the Rocky Mountain Championships. And Visit Aurora was awarded a $20,000 grant for 2015 from the Colorado Tourism Office to assist with marketing and advertising. And this will uh, allow Visit Aurora to expand its annual advertising campaign. Two events that a Visit Aurora has uh, brought to Aurora coming up in uh, 2017. First one is this Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association. It's coming in March of 2017. It will be 400 attendees and over 1,200 room nights at our partner hotels. And then the uh, second one is the Society for the Prevention and Advancement of the Harmonica Convention. <laughs> August, yeah, maybe this, in uh, August of 2017, that'll be about 350 people and a thousand room nights at our hotel. So, yeah, let's go for the tubas next. So, that's the uh, visit Aurora update. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else for study session, Bob? Uh, Mayor, I think it was at our last meeting um, there was a suggestion. I don't know if Councilmember Cleveland uh, made it or not, but it was the the concept of having a trip to DC that wasn't part of NLC. That's what we're going to talk about on June, on January 12th. Okay, great. I yes. just hope to see that date on the calendar to see if we can plug it in. Yep. Okay. Um, any okay. Um, we were to um, have an executive session beginning at 6, and then another executive session after the regular meeting. Um, we have a... Uh, Get a hold of Rita? Uh, yes, Rita is on her way. Okay. 
Um, what we're going to try to do is handle both things before the regular meeting, so we can get out. But the easiest way to do that would be to have the um, DIA uh, executive session first and the personnel executive session second. So we're going to give you 20 minutes to uh, get upstairs, take a bathroom break, whatever you need, but we're going to call the uh, executive session to order at 645 and we're going to start, I'm sorry, 545, and we're going to start with the DIA issue first. So a little change in plan, but we'll try to get everything done early. Thank you. Yeah.